very much. Um, hi everybody, I'm Alice Boone. I am the Strategic Lead for School Effectiveness uh, in Reading and I'm also leading on the Autism Growth Approach in Reading with my colleague De Punta and Angelica Weiss who's also on the call today. So we just thought we'd, we'd give an overview of where we're at and what we've been trying to do to support uh, understanding of autism and confidence in the education community over the last two years. We're at the beginning of our journey, um, but we're proud of what's been achieved so far, and we know there's still a long way to go. So we had the typical drivers really for, for setting up a distinct strategy in this area um, that many of you will be familiar with, increasing numbers uh, of children presenting, um, with neurodiversity uh, of all kinds, a um, limited amount of specialist provision locally, and a lack of confidence and understanding within the education community about how best um, to, to give access, equitable access to people who are um, who identify or with that diagnosis of, of neurodiversity. So despite all the best efforts of the community, the professionals within it, the families within it, the children within it, the experiences of autistic um, children and young people and their families were not as good as other people, often distressing um, and often reflecting poor practice um, and a lack of understanding about what research says and what the, the lived experience of those people were. So the reason that we call it a growth approach is because of our aim. So we wanted to grow that system wide understanding of autism as a difference and not a deficit, which we've we've talked about so much today. And as an out and proud autistic woman with autistic children, everything today has been real music to my ears. And it's something that we have an absolute shared passion about um, within Reading. So we wanted to enable autistic um, and NDCYP to grow into who and what they want to be without those barriers to educational access that we've talked about um, already today. We also wanted to grow the confidence of autistic um, children and young people and those with neurodiversity to live proudly and authentically in our community, um, because we see that really as them having access to good mental health and well-being throughout their childhood. Um, and we really wanted to recognise that their lived experiences as a minority group actually are often distressing and traumatic. Um, so part of that is about reducing that, but also about providing uh, mental health services and support throughout childhood um, to really enable children to, to um, think in the ways that we've been talking about this morning and certainly in that last presentation. We also want to really grow the influence um, on our system leaders in education from the voices of autistic children and young people and their families themselves. So I think we have a tendency to pay lip service to how important the voice of, of um, people who are actually autistic and have neurodiversity is, but we wanted to make sure that actually that was that was fundamental and embedded and grow the influence that that voice has on actually making change at an operational level. And a lot of what we see as part of this is also about making things more positive for everybody in education, because we recognise that good practice in this area is actually good for everyone. It actually enhances learning and fundamentally schools are in the business of um, of learning and we want to make sure that for everyone we're teaching in ways and we're setting up environments and systems in ways that make that more likely and not less likely for huge amounts of our population. We also want to grow schools and settings competence and confidence to take a positive and skills enabling approach and to make effective adaptations in schools. Actually all of our school teams, the people that work in education, they want to do well and they will do well if they've got the skills um, and actually the resources to be able to do that. So wherever that's possible, we wanted to enable that and make sure that people wanting to do a great job, wanting to make a difference, wanting to actually respond effectively to the voices of, of children in their care, that they were given every possible advantage to be able to do that. 
We wanted to also grow our places in resource to mainstream position as well as our specialist and alternative provision because we want all of our kids to be able to go to a local school and have a great time there and achieve fantastic outcomes. And we wanted to grow curriculum ex excellence right across our system and system leadership in this particular area in Reading schools and settings. We also want to enable that early identification that we've been talking about today and to move away from this idea that you only get what you need if you've got a diagnosis. So we really want to have a look at that needs led pathway rather than a diagnostic pathway. So a few things just to talk about that I think are helping us to be successful and move forward with this is that the growth approach is at the heart of the education strategy and there's long-term political commitment to it. It's not an add-on, it's not about training to schools, it's about setting up quite a complex set of systems that really support inclusion and access for everybody in our community. So we want to develop that equity and that understanding of what equity means and how to, to achieve it right across the system. Um, where we try and do things in a tokenistic way, I don't think that works in education. Everybody needs time to learn. Everybody needs time to, to make those adaptations. And schools particularly can be big ships to turn in terms of culture and the impact of training. So we need to be in it for the long haul. And we need to make sure that everything we do in our strategy really works together well so it's not you know you haven't got behavior policies that don't work alongside the autism training that you've had so that belief that good practice enables all children to learn more effectively is also really important we want this idea that what is good practice for for children who are neuro have neuro neurodiversity or autism is also good practice for everybody else um, what we are saying, though, very, very clearly is that though it is nice to have for children who um, don't have um, autism or, or neurodiversity, actually, if you choose not to embed those things, you are discriminating against children who do. And that that is a cause for concern and that as systems leaders, in terms of our duty to monitor and check how well our schools are doing, that where we see that people aren't doing things that can make a difference, we see that as problematic and that's something that where we might need to intervene. So what we've been working on over the last uh, two years and that we increased to work on are some strategic um, big areas. So developing that range of local provision, developing system leadership and improving good practice and confidence. And we've come a long way and we're really proud of what we've achieved so far. So we have significantly increased um, mainstream provision for uh, resourced bases with specialist leaders and specialist networks um, around them so that actually they are not isolated and alone and good practice is shared really well. We've also increased our specialist provision quite significantly. We're currently through the DBV project um, enhancing our advisory ca capacity and we are also um, have a very well developed MHT team who are um, working on various innovative projects to support this particular community with that emotional and mental health that we, we talked about. Um, we have established a, an AET, Autism um, Education Trust training hub within Reading, um, and that's had lots and lots of benefits, not least to that networking between professionals and school to school support. We're um, 20 people away from our thousandth delegate having undergone that training in the last two years and training is really beginning to take off because we've made that something that we've been talking to governors about being an essential part of the offer within their schools. Um, going forward this year we are particularly looking at developing the Portsmouth model um, in terms of that early identification and assessment. Um, we've got some really interesting and innovative work going on um, with our school meals team looking at food sensitivity um, and diet we're looking at certs training and so on. Um, 
We're also looking this year at how we continue to implement the training because, you know, we can all go on training and do nothing about it. But we're really keen that we continue to support our school leaders to really embed um, the key messages that they've taken away and the simple things that they can do. So we're asking schools to do a number of things. Really importantly, we're asking schools to make sure that they are embedding research informed curriculum of excellence, particularly in terms of how we teach um, the principles of instruction, how we manage to teach so that children um, can pay attention well and are not cognitively overloaded in class because we truly believe that if we can help children feel clever, if we can help children just by giving them that take up time, making sure things are split into small pieces, providing adequate scaffolds, etc., that actually that feeling of cleverness is very, very supportive of mental health and wellbeing in schools and far fewer children would be leaving the system later on if that was a consistent expectation in all classes. We're expecting staff in schools to have had good autism practice training and we've we've managed to kind of distill the five key things we would like schools to do um, in terms of uh, basic adaptations that support everything into something called our uh, five point plan which I'll show you in a minute. We're asking um, schools Alice, to educate their communities. Minutes. Are we at just, 10 minutes? Okay. Yeah, just to I'll, let you I'll know. Very, we, I'm so sorry, I could talk for hours. Um, we, we've also worked really, really closely with our children to help them to make some videos for our schools so that they know how to adapt. School point van is really, really simple. So I think some of the problem with um, adaptations is that it's really tricky for schools to think about hundreds of individual things, but we're saying there's five things you can do that make a real difference. Um, and we're very happy to share with anybody the work that we've done with that. Um, so if you do want to talk more, please do get in touch. We're really keen to learn from other authorities to collaborate and share some of the good work that we've done. And thanks for listening today.